Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. On July 26, a public clinic opened at the Ansung Rest Area on the Seoul-bound Kyungbu Expressway. This facility, the first expressway public clinic in Korea, is staffed by six medical personnel and operates throughout the year, including holidays, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays, and from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on other days of the week. With intensive heat waves affecting people as well as crops and livestock in Korea, the Kyungi Agricultural Research Extension Services swiftly began operation of its agricultural status room while advising farmers to take special care to prevent heat-related damage. Farmers who face possible heat damage can seek technical support by contacting the Institute or local agricultural technology centers. Kyungi Province has announced plans to establish a carbon-neutral hydrogen complex at Pyeongtaek Port and to initiate a cooperative system with 20 public organizations to that end. This announcement was made at the July 26 signing of related investment and cooperation agreements by Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung, Pyeongtaek City Mayor Jung Jang Sun, and Kyungi Province Climate Response and Industry Conversion Committee co chairs Jo Myung Nae and Gang Gum Shil. Part of efforts to realize carbon neutrality by the year 2050, the Pyeongtaek Port Carbon Neutral Hydrogen Complex is a Korean government initiative that will see the creation of a special hydrogen complex, hydrogen city, and green hydrogen region in the Pyeongtaek port area. According to the related agreements, Kyungi Province and the participating organizations will cooperate in establishment processes for the complex through a related executive committee with the aim of transforming Pyeongtaek port into a hydrogen port by the year 2040. With daily life increasingly being governed by the volume and value of data, Kyungi Province plans to hold an international forum on data sovereignty, the first of its kind in the world, so as to identify ways in which to protect and exercise personal data rights. Slated for September 8th, the 2021 Data Sovereignty International Forum, to be held both online and offline, will feature related specialists, government officials and private organization representatives from around the world. Discussion subjects will also include the roles of data users. With heatwave warnings in effect for all 31 cities and counties of Kyungi Province, the provincial administration has been pursuing comprehensive heat damage prevention measures. Vulnerable individuals, including seniors, are being visited by public officials who provide equipment and guidance to help prevent heat-related harm. A homeless individual protection system has also been established to monitor the health of such individuals and to provide emergency relief, such as medicine and water. Outdoor workers, including construction workers, are being monitored to ensure the operation of regular rest systems, as well as to provide workers with heat shelters and safety education. Kyungi Province has released Korean indigenous mudfish into inland waters at 13 locations as an eco-friendly means of controlling oriental mayfly and mosquito populations. Produced by the Kyungi Maritime and Fisheries Research Institute, the mudfish prey on these insect pests with one fish devouring more than a thousand larvae on average daily. For a three-day period from July 20th to 22nd, a total of 50,000 mudfish between 2,000 and 7,000 at each location, were released in Kyungi inland waters, including sites in the cities of Yangpyeong, Yeoju, and Namyeongju. On July 28th, the Local Government Council on Basic Income held its first regular meeting via teleconferencing. Out of 80 affiliated local governments, representatives of 59 participated in this meeting, including Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae Myung, Ulju County Mayor Lee Sun Ho and Osan City Mayor Gwak Sang U. During the meeting, participants passed four proposals for the establishment of the Council's operational foundation, including those regarding local government basic income contributions, secretariat organization, and approval systems, as well as budget, accounting, 
and equipment management. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.